God then was blessed by the gods of me and you. We had it was for to find ourselves. Okay, everybody, welcome to Feathers, Furs, and Flies. We're going to do another tying video today, as you can see. My vice is set up. And today we're going to be tying an Isonychia nymph. Um, right now the Isonychias are, are coming off here in Michigan. And I thought it would be a great tutorial to start doing. Now this is one of the nymphs that is super easy to fish as well. You, you don't have to get a dead, uh, drift, dead drift presentation with an Isonychia nymph. As always, I'm going to pinch the barb down on the hook so that we don't hurt our fishy friends. Put the hook into the vise. There we go. Now the hook that I'm using is a um, TMC 400T in a size 12. It's a swimming nymph hook. It's light wire but uh, it is a perfect hook for Isonychia flies. Um, so let's let's get started here. Uh, first off, just gonna wax my thread, and uh, this is uh, just cobbler's wax. Uh, a friend of mine actually gave this to me. He made it himself, and it, it normally is a, a pure yellow color. Um, got some right here. Um, and that's what it looks like there, but uh, it's got a higher um, tallow or resin content, so it makes it a little stickier. And tying any flies, wax, um, is a, a huge help. So for this fly, I'm going to start just in the middle of the hook and start to work my way down. This is going to be... A fairly quick fly to tie. It's a little more in depth than than the caddis that we did last time, but the the end result is, is going to look really good. Uh, I've got a pheasant tail here. This is, believe it or not, a natural pheasant tail. Uh, it's just from a darker mutation, and uh, I find that these this color mimics. The Isonychian of perfectly. If you don't have a natural tail that is in this color, you can see it's very kind of purpley when you turn it. That's just fine. You can use uh, pheasant tail dyed dark brown or just natural pheasant tail. Um, moose, moose mane fibers work great as tails for stuff like this or for Isonychia flies. And all I did there was I pulled, I grabbed three fibers, pulled them out so that the tips lined up and then Pulled them away. Isonychia nymphs don't have a very long tail, so the tail here is going to be about half the shank length. And on top, I'm going to offer them to the side so that they roll onto the top. And what I'm going to do is, keeping hold of it, I went one turn onto the bear hook. I released and went underneath those fibers and then came back and then it turned to hold. And all that does is it spreads those fibers out a little bit. Not a great job, but uh, if you want to, you can go ahead and figure eight through those to make them stand out a little bit more. But that's how you that put that on. Now, Isonychia nymphs have a white stripe that runs down the back uh, of the abdomen thorax and thorax. What I've got here is a support quill from a, or basically it's a peacock tail quill. Um, what most people don't know about peacocks is the long feathers that you see is actually not the tail feathers. Those are modified and elongated saddle feathers from a peacock. These are the actual tail feathers. And the fibers in the stem, you can see how thick the rachis is on this. It's very stiff. The feathers, or the fibers on this, are actually quite stiff as well. It reminds me of um, secondary uh, quill, secondary wing quills from turkeys. Um, 
or flight feathers almost the, the, with the thickness of the barb. So I'm just going to pull one of these off and trim that out. Now I'm very lucky to have some contacts that breed peacocks, um, but with a little bit of searching, I'm I'm pretty sure you guys would be able to find somebody very close to where you are, believe it or not, that actually has peacocks or knows somebody who raises peacocks that you could talk to about getting some of those feathers. Just a single turn on top, I offered it to the side again, a single turn on top to hold. And then we're going to put our rib in to try to keep this fly together a little bit and protect it from the teeth of the fish. Um, I am using, let's see here, UTC Ultrawire in silver. Um, you can use it in gold if you want, which I think would contrast the fly nicely, but because I don't have gold, I'm using silver. Always use the back of your scissors to cut wire. Also to cut your thread, when you accidentally cut your thread to go try and show everybody how to cut the wire. Again, offer it to the side. One more turn to hold. And now I'm just going to go through and tidy up. So while I'm doing this, I said I'd explain a little bit more about an Isonychian nymph. Isonychi is a species of mayfly. It's a little bit larger mayfly. Not huge, but it's not uh, like your, your blue wing olives that are super tiny. Or some of your pale morning duns, pale evening duns, and your sulfurs that can be really small. Isonychia nymphs are swimming nymphs, which is why we're using the hook that we are. And I apologize, I forgot to tell you guys what we're what materials we're using it is going to be in the description below so you can check it out there but this is a, a, a TMC 400 T in a swimming nymph hook size 12 anyways Isonychia nymphs are very strong swimmers they kind of remind me a little bit of a an underwater butterfly the way that they jerk and dart and change direction really quick and flip around and that's why I say they're a great fly to nymph with because Number one, it's a little bit bigger morsel for the fish to eat, so they're pr more prone to eat it. And secondly, you can swing these things. You don't have to dead drift them. And fish will eat them. It's a very easy way to, to start somebody on trying to learn how to nymph as well. Uh, teaching them the technique of, of swinging a fly, especially a nymph, because all you have to do is quarter it downstream, and away you go. Um, for our body material, I'm going to be using a dark brown or fiery brown seals fur. You can use a brown SLF. You can use uh, brown hare's ear. And I said it in the last video with the caddis, the tan caddis. I love the way that seals fur looks in the water. It is, it, it just glows. So we're going to start this body. I've dubbed it on there. And Isonychias also have pretty prominent gills along the side, so we're going to make this thing pretty buggy. Um, if you've got that hair's ear dubbing that you're using, or if you have a hair a hair's mask, um, squirrel dubbing, if you're using that, don't get something with guard hairs in there because that's going to help represent those gills as well. Moving along. Some people uh, wrap ostrich hurl dyed brown around their isonymphs. I'm not a huge fan of it just because it adds another step and ostrich hurl is very a very weak material. So you know a fish or two and you've got to take that ostrich right off. But it's personal preference. Get a little bit more here. Dub that on And we're going to take that all the way up to about the middle of the shank. Now, if you're tying, if you don't have a swimming nymph hook, that is just fine. I tie this exact same fly on a straight shank nymph hook. 
Um, I like to use something that's a bit like a heavier um, nymph hook, like a 2x or 3x heavy nymph hook, um, just because it, when you swing that fly, it gets it down a little deeper first off, and then as you go, it rides up and it rides really nicely. But it just helps give you a little bit more weight um, when you are trying to get that fly down for the initial sink. So there's that, and then we're going to take our peacock tail barb, pull that up, a couple of turns to hold, put a little bit more wax on my thread, and then I'm going to take the silver wire and start to rib. Now as I go, that peacock tail fiber on the top is going to want to rotate around, so I'm just going to pull that back as I go. And you're just looking for a good four or five turns. Ninety degree bend into the wire up towards the front. And then I just take and bend and break this wire off. It's a lot better than cutting it and you don't ruin your scissors that way. I've got plenty there for another rib on another fly. So I've tied forward a little bit, then I'm going to actually take this peacock tail barb and fold it back, a few wraps to hold, and now we're going to dub up our, well actually we need to, to add our shell casing on. I'm going to go back to, or wing case on, I'm going to go back to the, uh, the, the pheasant tail. I'm going to grab a good eight or nine, eight to ten fibers. Again, stems out, or pull them away until those tips line up. Pinch them down, and I'm going to tie those right on top of the hook. Then I'm going to take my thumbnail, my fingernail, just push down on those a little bit, trying to get them to spread out so they're not right on top of each other. This will help us get a nice full wing case when we go to do it. Kind of pull those up. And I'm not going to cut those all the way down, but I don't want any of those tips going forward of the eye, so I'm just going to clean that up real quick. And now I'm going to add in my my thorax. I'm going to go back to that seal's fur. Some guys may want to use peacock curl for this. Uh, I'm seeing nymphs like this tied with that, so you can do that as well. But I've got the materials out, and when I'm tying fishing flies, I just like to crank through them. So having all of the, being able to use the same material is great. I'm going to wrap the dubbing back over that wing case and the white stripe just by a little bit here and then start going forward again because I want to get that wing case to have a nice exit and nice clean transition over our thorax. Again more seals fur, more body dubbing. And again, ISOs are strong swimmers, so they ha they're they a bit bulkier. They have, they got some muscle, some shoulders on them to, to fight through that current. So I'm going to leave about two or three millimeters for the eye because we are going to add in our legs now. Uh, what I'm going to be using is a tan called a canard or CDC feather. These ones just happen to be by White River, sold out of Bass Pro Shops. Um, you can get them from Wapsie, Vineyards, um, all of those different places. I would highly suggest getting them from your local fly shop though. All we're going to need is one feather. And what we're going to do is get some hackle pliers here so you can see actually what I'm doing. I'm going to Hold the tip, 
Just pull that back. Wax for some grip. Offer it to the side. Two or three turns up. I'm going to take that tip of that feather, fold it back for durability. Now that thing, if teeth cut it, it has to pull out. It can't just break off. And then I'm going to hold this straight up in the air. pull these fibers back and I'm just going to go with one two three turns come up pull my thread straight up 90 degree bend into that stem three or four turns to hold. Try not to cut my thread. Trim that off as close as possible. A couple of turns to tidy up. And we're going to take our shell, or our wing casing. Actually before we do that, all I'm going to do is part these CDC fibers down the middle so that they're to the side so it creates an opening where we can get that wing case over. This actually makes those CDC fibers look more like legs in the water. It makes the nymph look a little bit more realistic. So I'm going to pull that there. One, two, three. Take that white peacock tail fiber over the top. One, two, three to hold. I'm going to pull all those CDC fibers out of the way. And I'm going to trim all of this off. Again, add a little bit more wax to my thread. Any fibers going forward to the eye, just pull those back. And then just tidy up the head area. Keep your thread tight. And go straight into a whip finish. One, two, three. Four. And trim away. Some people like to go in then with a coat of super glue to harden that head up. I don't have any right now, otherwise I would. I really like that idea. It sets quickly, hardens everything, and then you can go in with a coat of varnish. I'm just going to use some Sally Hansen's, hard as nails. If you've got Zappa Gap, hard as hull. All of those things work well. Try and be careful not to touch those CDC fibers. They are so delicate that if this, if any adhesive or uh, something that will harden gets on there, they will not. It will not uh, look right in the water. They'll just stick straight out. Take my dumb, my bodkin, clean out the eye, and that is it. That is your Isonychia swimming nymph. Now, again, like I said, when you're fishing this, all you need to do is cast at 45 downstream, make an upstream mend, let it sink, and then let it swing through the current. A lot of times the hits are going to come at the end of the swing, 
when you're just letting it dangle in the water. Once this thing is finished swinging downstream, let it sit there for a good 10-15 seconds because that nymph is going to be bouncing around at the very end of that that line and that's when the fish will a lot of times come up and get it. You will get some that hit it on mid-swing but a lot of times it's going to be at the end because that nymph is going to rise off the bottom and rise up towards the surface and that's what those fish are keying in on is that rise motion. Guys, I really hope that you like this. Please leave your comments um, below in the comments section. Any tips or tricks that you guys have that you want to share, please do. And uh, remember to like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. And you guys have a great day. Tight lines.